Meet Edga Hedvig, professor in industrial ecology at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Edgar leads the International Resource Panel's work on resource efficiency and climate change. The panel's work has been used in many policy processes such as EC's Circular Economy Action Plan and the Renovation Wave for Europe, a part of EU's climate policy for the building sector. Hertwig is ranked among the top 100 researchers in the world in the fields of environmental science and climate change and was the lead author of the Energy Systems chapter of the IPCC 5th Assessment Report. Edgar, you have the floor. Thank you, Nick. It is a pleasure to talk to you all. Uh, Madonna already told us that we're living in a material world. And why does this matter for climate protection? Uh, the production of materials uh, on this globe causes about uh, one quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions. As such, it is more important than agriculture and forestry taken together. These numbers are really up. Why don't you learn this in school? It was because before uh, the numbers were smaller. It was only 15%. Um, the construction sector, uh, buildings and infrastructure are about 40% of the material use measured in the carbon footprint. And the most important materials for the construction sector in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions uh, are concrete and other things that are made from cement and iron and steel that are used in construction. Um, and these together account for more than 10% of global emissions. Uh, if we want to go to a net zero world, we will need to do something with these materials. So the study that I led for the International Resource Panel looked at opportunities to uh, reduce these greenhouse gas emissions through strategies of the circular economy and through material efficiency. Uh, and in particular, we, we looked at uh, building lighter structures that require less materials, moving to less emissions intensive materials away from concrete and steel and masonry towards wood and other plant-based construction materials that store carbon, um, reducing the waste in the construction process, uh, improving the use of the products, using the floor space more intensively so that we would need to, uh, less of it. Uh, and uh, then f uh, finally extending the life of the products or recycling the, the products, that means the homes in this case. Uh, and all of these strategies we found out are important, but they are not equally important. Uh, we found out that the most effective strategy that we could, we could follow in our work uh, is actually to have a more intensive use of the buildings less floor space per capita. And, uh, and so you wonder, you know, this uh, might be a very intrusive strategy if it is pursued by policy. But in fact, we found out uh, that there are several ways of achieving uh, a more intensive use of floor space. Uh, one of them was to m have more multifamily homes instead of single family homes. People who live in multifamily homes generally use less floor space. They also have a higher, more energy efficient home. So there's a, a benefit in addition to uh, reducing the material requirements. We also reduce um, the energy use because we share the outer walls with other people and therefore have less energy transmission through the outer walls. Um, there is also the opportunity in multifamily homes to share infrastructure with each other. For example, to have guest rooms that can be uh, uh, booked instead of having your individual guest room, to have sports facilities and other common areas that you share with each other. So sharing is an important way of achieving a more intensive uh, use of living space. And uh, why does um, the use of uh, the more intensive use actually help the circular economy. It is because as long as we're increasing the building stock, we are growing our stock of buildings and having more and more, uh, we cannot supply those materials by recycling. 
uh, we always need to add new materials to the existing building stock. So we can achieve a circular economy only when once we uh, start stabilizing the existing building stock. Uh, further, we found that existing recycling already uh, provides a substantial saving of emissions compared to only using virgin material. And the most important recycling that happens today is that of metals, of, of structural steel, of copper in wires and, and, and pipes and so on. Um, in the future, we have the opportunity to uh, increase the savings from uh, collecting more material and from also recycling minerals. Of course, the savings from recycling minerals are smaller than the ones from, from recycling the metals because you don't, it's hard to bring the minerals back to the same uh, quality. Uh, finally, we found that especially in developing countries, there was a good opportunity to use more wood as a construction material. Um, and that uh, not only saves emissions from materials production, it also stores carbon in the buildings. Uh, and it's actually the best thing you can do with wood is to use it as a construction material instead of any of the other uh, uh, uses such as biofuels or, or, or uh, electricity production. Uh, reducing waste in the construction process is also important. Uh, you can do that, for example, through prefabrication uh, or you can uh, use building information systems uh, that allow you to uh, to better control your whole construction process and thereby uh, to already produce elements in the sizes that, that you need inst instead of cutting them to sizes at the construction process. Um, lifetime extension uh, is also an interesting strategy, uh, but it should be used with care uh, because it works only together if you, if you do a refurbishment. Old, buildi old buildings tend to require more operational energy use, have lower energy efficiency, and so that more only makes sense uh, if, we, uh, if we do a refurbishment at the same time. Finally, architects have come up with lots of ways to design lighter structures uh, using, for example, arches or using trusses instead of beams. Uh, we were very conservative with our assumptions in our modeling uh, with regard to the opportunities there. Uh, but I think that there is actually much more scope in the future uh, through creative uh, structural engineering uh, to design lighter buildings that require less building materials. Uh, in our modeling, we estimate that by 2050, we can save about 35% of the emissions uh, from the uh, residential sector by adopting these seven strategies in the G7 countries. However, the largest savings are possible in those countries that are emerging today, like China and India, where we estimate that emission savings up to 60% are possible with the strategies. Um, and so these are really important. Uh, and I want to come back uh, to, this emission, uh, to this issue of the floor space. We actually went deeper into this question of why is it that in some countries per capita floor space is 70 square meters, like in the United States. In the other, like, other countries, it's 35 square meters, like in the United Kingdom, where these countries are quite similar in other aspects. And we found that actually policy is an important explanatory factor. There are lots of policies in place that actually drive large residences in the US. There is single family zoning. So uh, people are not allowed to build multifamily homes in a lot of the uh, attractive areas. Uh, uh, there is a support for mortgages uh, by the government that means uh, especially mortgages for single-family homes are supported, not for multifamily homes. Uh, there is tax incentives uh, that the interest payments on your mortgage are deductible from your taxes. And especially wealthy people who have high taxes save a lot. And there's no limit on the size of the residence that is supported through these tax incentives. Uh, 
In Norway, where I live, we have similar tax regimes uh, that create incentives for wealthy people to always increase and move to more expensive living space, uh, which keeps the construction industry busy with building houses for the wealthy, and there is a really a, sh a shortage of living space uh, for people who are, who are sort of at entry-level uh, jobs. And that's really a situation uh, that is not favorable. And so we really need to urge our governments uh, to get rid of the policies uh, that favor the construction of unnecessary housing. And those are really important aspects, I think. With that, I would like to give it back to you, Nick. Happy to look at the discussion. Thanks a lot, Edgar. And uh, interesting that you mentioned policy at the end. Fantastic. That's very important.